Okay, hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gerdes. It is Wednesday, November 13th, 2024. And yesterday was the highest one day casualty rate in the war. Now, so what does that mean uh, for today? Today was the second highest, but today is it's tied with the second highest the day before the highest. It's very strange. So it was 1770, then 1950, and then 1770 again. Okay, that's that's how hot the battlefield is right now. Now, somebody commented on this two days ago when I did the 1770 because I was correcting. I was showing the progression. Ha ha, the next time Russia breaks a record, you can post a clip from this video and you'll appear four times. Well, they were talking about this video where I was I had got it wrong saying 1710 about two weeks ago was the highest when it was actually in this video. I was correcting it was uh, uh, 17. Uh, 40 and then it okay so you get the idea well he got to see it okay what does 1770 mean this is today's second highest number and it's again they posted this two days ago every 49 seconds russia loses one soldier we make the occupiers pay the highest price for their brutal invasion and it was down to 44 seconds yesterday so every 49 seconds Okay, here's the Kyiv post not yielding to Trump's reported advice. Russia returns to missile attacks on Kyiv. Remember, Trump was saying don't escalate, and um, well, they escalated, and they keep escalating. And they, I mean, the the numbers of casualties are telling you what's going on. Okay, zero out of two S three hundred ballistic missiles, two out of two KH one hundred one cruise missiles, two out of two Iskander uh, ballistic missiles were shot down yesterday. That means two got through, and then there was six out of six drones that actually got through. Uh, Eighty four shot down either regular or through electronic warfare. This morning, Russia launched yet another combined attack on our city, says Zelensky. Our air defense responded effectively, including ballistic and cruise missiles targeting Kiev. Now, they have a terrible time hitting ballistic missiles. They can knock down cruise missiles, but they almost never get ballistic missiles. Okay, since the start of the full-scale invasion, Russia attacks have completely destroyed 227 medical facilities, right? Hitting a hospital is a war crime, like you shouldn't be doing that, uh, and damaging 1,700 more. Russia deliberately targets hospitals, clinics, maternity hospitals, yet our Ukrainian doctors, nurses, and medical staff remain by their patient side, even under threat to their own. Okay. Uh, this morning, Kyiv was attacked simultaneously with missiles and drones for the first time in 73 days. 73 days, both missiles and drones simultaneously attacking the city. And it had some effect. Thousands of people in Kyiv subway trying to get to work after an air alert. They're also pressing on the front line. So let's let's look at what's going on on the front line because this is really important. What they want to do or what Putin, I think, wants to do is drive everyone out of Kursk. And if you can drive it out of Kursk before January, all the better. You're in a better bargaining position before Trump takes office. And who knows exactly how that's all going to play out. So this is Jake Bro talking about the Russians are launching this new attack every 15 minutes in Kursk. Let's look at the rest of the battlefield. Okay, the Russians also conducted eight airstrikes, air, airstrikes on Kursk, dropping 11 GABs. So that's in the Kursk region. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at this progressively and see like they're doing four here and eight here and 11 here and just see just all along the battlefield. Kharkiv region, four times in the Vochansk region, the invaders attacked. Uh, in the Dnipro River region, five enemy attempts to storm the positions of our soldiers. Uh, in the Lyman direction, or Liman direction, six attacks. Um, in Seversk direction, Ukrainian defenders repulsed a Russian attack. In Horvlika, the invaders made 10 attacks. Okay, so you can see the battlefield maps. And again, this is a very high level uh, overview. Someone like Greg Terry will do a really deep dive and something like this. Maybe um, uh, Johnny Pierce from ATP Geopolitics. I'm just kind of giving you a sense of what's going on. 13 times in the areas in Donetsk region and Novodorivka. And then Kupiansk direction stormed Ukrainian position 17 times. Uh, and then Pakros direction 19 times. Now Pakros is really the thing that I'm most worried about as far as all of these, uh, because that's that's going to give it give Ukraine the hardest time to recover from that. 
Uh, there were 47 combat engagements in the Donetsk region. Um, wow. Okay. So yesterday I was talking about the dam that was broken. Uh, that's this. Uh, blown dam means big trouble because it's not a strategic victory, but it is a tactical gain that could push them closer to achieving a different gain. At any rate, this is Russian forces may have targeted a dam at the Karakova Reservoir to cause significant and long-lasting flooding to the west, potentially facilitating efforts to encircle the Ukrainian forces north and south of Karakova, according to the ISW. Now, I had some trolls in here saying, of course, Ukraine must have uh, done it because that was making it harder for the Russians. No, it's easier for the Russians. And Greg Terry actually said this yesterday. He said so much. Just essentially what the ISW just said here, Greg Terry was explaining to me a day earlier. So, okay, good on you, Greg. So now this was interesting. The U.S. has delivered 83% of munitions, 67% of critical air defense, 60% of firepower capabilities. They are saying on November 12th. That's yesterday. So I thought that was interesting. So I went into the actual article. This is in the Kiev Independent. And what was being said here, the U.S. has delivered 83% of munitions, 67% of critical air defense, 60% of firepower capabilities committed to Ukraine under the defense packages between April and mid-October. Pentagon spokesperson Major General Pat Ryder said on November 12th. Now, Kiev had previously complained about a slow pace of U.S. aid deliveries. President Zelensky said in October 30th press conference that only 10% of the aid approved by Congress in April had actually reached Ukraine. So I'm not sure what the disparity is or where that came from. Perhaps that was hyperbolic language or he was misinformed or he was talking about all the aid from that time, not just the U.S. And mis I, I, I just don't know. But that is good to know that the U.S. has delivered on those things and that that is somewhat comforting. Okay. Meanwhile, France will supply Ukraine with six Mirage 2000s upgraded to fire scalp air-launched cruise missiles as part of its first tranche of fighter deliveries in the near future. But how far along is the near future? That's really the, the question here, and that's what we have to wrestle with. Okay, this was an interesting story. Uh, so, Ukraine Security Service has confirmed the elimination of Valery Transkoski, head of the missile ship headquarters of the Russia Black Sea Fleet. Transkovsky was a war criminal who ordered missile strikes on civilian targets. His car was apparently blown up uh, and he died of his injuries as his car blew up. Um, Jane Keeve commented another reminder that Ukraine's version of the Mossad is eventually going to make Mossad look like Teletubbies. I think that's probably accurate. I, I think Ukraine's going to keep coming for these war criminals. Even if they make peace, I think Ukraine's going to keep coming for war criminals to uh, settle the score after this is done. Antony Blinken has vowed that North Korean involvement in the war will, quote, get a firm response, unquote, according to Sky News. And then Max24, he's a NAFO fella I follow on Twitter. I, I got to give him credit here. USA Statement Department confirmed yesterday. Wow. I mean, I wish I had thought of that instead of the State Department, the Statement Department, because that's pretty much all they do is strong words. We are very concerned. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be using that from here in the future. Okay. When night falls, Ukraine drones go on the hunt. I just, I think drones are just such a game changer and they are the way of the future. And yeah. Okay. Last image I want to leave you with in light of all the bombing, the, uh, the horrific destruction that's been leveled, uh, on, on Ukraine. I just think that this, this is just a brilliant piece of art. All right, my friends, that's all that I have for you today. Thank you for the time that you shared with me. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.